Members, Mr. Mark Durkin has given notice of an urgent oral question to the Minister of Health. I would remind members that if they wish to ask a supplementary question, they should continually rise in their seats, from their seats. The member who tabled the question will be called automatically to ask a supplementary. Clerk, please read the question. To ask the Minister of Health following a departmental report which indicated that over 93% of patients in the Southern Health and Social Care Trust area waited more than the target of 14 days for a first consultation following an urgent referral for suspected breast cancer to outline what immediate intervention her department is taking to address cancer waiting times. Call the Minister of Health. I'm aware the Southern HSE Trust is experiencing challenges in meeting the 14-day target for urgent referrals for suspected breast cancer. I regret any delays that are being experienced, and I wish to assure you that everything is being done to ensure those referred are being seen as soon as possible. The provisional figures for September show a marked improvement in performance in the Southern Trust, with a 77.6% of urgent referrals seen within the 14-day target. This is as a result of trusts working together to provide additional clinics. In addition, the Trust has extended its working hours and this has facilitated the operation of a fourth breast clinic. Increasing pressures on cancer services due to an aging population and increased referrals inevitably create a pressure on our health services. For example, between 14-15 and 15-16, an additional 10,348 people were referred as red flag because of suspected cancer. Of, of that 10,348, over 3,000 were red flag referrals for suspected breast cancer. That is why we need to reform health and social care system. Longer term, we need to ensure that we have a sustainable breast service in place to ensure that patients are seen within the time scale set. A workshop is due to be held on the 26th of October with all trusts to identify longer term solutions for providing a sustainable breast service across the north, given the staff and challenges in breast services right across the piece. Despite these challenges, it is positive that the five-year survival rates for breast cancer, the most common cancer in women, continues to be better than England, Scotland and Wales, and I am determined that this trend will continue. I call Mr Durkin for a supplementary. Thank you, uh, Mr Speaker, and I'd like to thank the Minister for coming to the House and for her answer. But would the Minister accept, in light of the awful figures that we heard today, in light of the increase in the number of people suffering from cancer, as she outlined, in light of data gaps around treatment, in light of people here not having the same access to life-improving drugs as people living with cancer in other jurisdictions, and in light of concerns around the workforce in cancer treatment, that we should have a cancer strategy for Northern Ireland. Well, I've raised that issue in the House before and I've discussed it on the back of a debate I think we had in the Chamber where I said that clearly that I would look towards developing a cancer strategy. I think that um, what we've seen over the last number of months, which is particularly relevant in the Southern Trust area, has been shocking. I think that it's unacceptable to say that any woman would have to wait any longer than is absolutely necessary. The targets are challenging targets and they're challenging for a reason. It's to make sure that we deliver and deliver the very best outcomes that we possibly can for any woman who finds herself referred for breast cancer for um, assessment. So I think that we need to continue to do more, but I think this also points to the fact that why we need to continue to deliver transformation and real meaningful transformation, because I listened this morning um, with interest in the media to some of the commentators, and Margaret Carr actually from Cancer Research, actually um, I thought what she said was so apt and so appropriate when she said waiting lists were a symptom of a bad system, a system that isn't working. That's what I've been consistently saying to this House, and that's what I'm setting out on in terms of my transformation piece and how we're going to actually deliver better outcomes for people, because that's the real test that I think that we need to apply to ourselves in terms of delivering better outcomes for all those people that need any element of our health and social care system. Call Mrs. Joanne Dobson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, the, um, these waiting times are symptomatic of the human tragedy engulfing the entire Northern Ireland Health Service and such shocking performances would see hedge rule in other regions and yet again we have a minister refusing to take any responsibility. Can I just pay tribute to the amazing staff, doctors and nurses working day in day out. Um, can the minister detail how many of the 215 of the 224 suspected breast cancer patients in the Southern Trust that were not seen within the target of 14 days were subsequently given a breast cancer diagnosis? 
As I said, I don't think it's acceptable that we've had the situation which we have. I think the member is very aware, as chair of the all-party working group on cancer, that she's very aware of the challenges that there are in relation to the workforce, which was a particular problem in the Southern Trust area. I think, as I said, this all points to the reason why we need to transform health and social care. We have to deliver better outcomes. We have a responsibility as an executive to deliver better outcomes, and I'm certainly going to be up for that challenge. And I will, in the no next number of weeks, announce my, my direction of travel in terms of what we need to do differently to deliver those better outcomes. I think the challenges that um, have been reported, and remember now, just so everybody's very clear, this is a report that I published last Thursday. I published the report and I published the statistics, but I think we do need to keep putting it out there in the public domain where the health service needs to do better. So I published these statistics for that reason and will continue to do so. I think it's so important that we tackle waiting lists. I said from the very first day I took office that we need to tackle waiting lists, that we need to transform health and social care, that we need to put mental health in terms of party esteem with physical health. Those are the challenges which I have. I took my position in the executive knowing that I have many, many challenges, but I'm certainly up for delivering better outcomes. And I look forward to all the parties in this House actually working with me in terms of delivering that transformation that we need to deliver. Call the Chair of the Health Committee, Paula Bradley. Mr Speaker, and can I thank the uh, Minister for answers thus far and also to Mr Durkin for tabling this uh, urgent oral today. And I also welcome her, her views on a cancer strategy, which is something that I've also been fighting for. And I also listened to that radio piece this morning and heard someone say about victim of our own success, which in a way is good news because we have people becoming more aware, but that is no comfort um, to the people who are waiting out there. Um, I just wanted to ask the Minister in relation to uh, the Belfast Trusts as well, from what I can see they seem to be pretty much on time uh, with many of their appointments. Is there any way of sharing services within the trust to alleviate some of the pressures? And also just on the back of that as well, um, I know breast cancer is not the only one where we're waiting, we have severe waiting lists. I also know that urology is another one. Just to ask if there's any steps she's going to take with that also. Um, I think just to say, and one of the things that I have been doing is making sure that I think the trusts do start to work more in partnership together. There should be no competition between trusts. It should be about what is the best outcome and what can they work with another neighbouring trust for in terms of delivering better outcomes for people. So I think that some of the, the turnaround which we've seen in the Southern Trust, and I think it's important to say that in the last, in, in this month alone, the Southern Trust are now at over 95% of urgent referrals being seen within the 14-day target. That's over 95%. So I think it's important that this assembly, and no member of this assembly, and I'm not up for one minute um, suggesting that the member opposite is, but I think it's important that no member of this assembly knee jerks to the media reaction. This was published last Thursday. I put it out there in the public domain last Thursday and I made it very clear the statistics aren't good enough. I said that in the press release from the department that accompanied that. But just to say in terms of where we're at from, from today, for, we're at the end of September, Belfast Trust, in terms of their 14-day performance, 99%. There's 1% still to go there and that's what we need to work towards. The Northern Trust, 99%. South Eastern Trust, 100%. The Southern Trust is where there has been obviously the problem, 78% at the end of September, but I'm told as of today that's up to 95% over the performance of the last week. The Western Trust, 100%. These are down, this is testimony to the, the clinicians, the people that are working on the front line, delivering first class health services. And I know for a fact in my engagement with those people, they'd be devastated whenever they hear knee-jerk reactions to the service that they're providing. These people are providing excellent services and those are the targets that they're meeting. Do we fall down on some of the other categories? Yes, the health service does. That's why we need to do more. Call Mr. Pat Sheehan. It's going break a slice in our ass, Dr. Agra. Uh, I thank the Minister for answers uh, so far. And uh, I welcome the fact that she's confirmed the, the most up-to-date position in regard to the red flag referrals uh, and the targets that have been met. I wonder, given that this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, uh, I wonder what her department is doing to raise awareness of breast cancer. I thank the member for his question. And it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and I think that it's important that we continue to raise awareness. And I think the figures that I referred to earlier, the fact that over 10,000 more people have been referred, shows that the awareness campaigns are actually working. Um, the Public Health Agency are urging all women to be breast aware and to think about attending screening when invited. I use this opportunity again today to encourage all women to do so and consider attending. Because we all know that prevention and early intervention are key in terms of saving lives from breast cancer. Regular breast screening reduces the risk of death from breast cancer. And on average, one life will be saved from breast cancer for every 200 women that are screened. So I encourage all women, all women, particularly over women over the age of 70, to consider contacting their local breast screening unit to arrange an appointment every three years. And many women don't realize that the risk of breast cancer continues to increase with age. So it's so important that we continue to um, raise the awareness. And I do think the fact that, you know, some of the things in terms of 
what's happening and what's good in our system is the fact that despite all the challenges that we have, the five-year survival rate for breast cancer is better here than England, Scotland and Wales. And that doesn't mean we can sit and rest in our, in our laurels, but it means that something's working, something's good. So we need to do more of that and do more of the same. And I think the fact that um, so many more people are being referred into the system is because the awareness is starting to really kick in and people are starting to really take it on board. Call Mrs Naomi Law. Speaker, um, I thank the Minister for her answer. Um, it's not the only area where I've been advised that there are issues with red flag referrals. For example, I've recently been advised that red flag referrals for ovarian cancer um, are also taking longer than the two weeks, often up to three or four weeks. What can the Minister do to reassure people that they will be seen within that two-week period? And what specific work has been done to fully implement the service framework for cancer prevention, treatment and care? I work in reverse in terms of the service framework. We're actually reviewing that, and I hope to have that information in November, which will then allow us to decide and best inform how we would take forward a potential cancer strategy if we decide that's the best course of action to take. I don't have statistics with me in relation to ovarian cancer, but I'm very happy to provide that to the member. If the, it, it would be exactly the same scenario if we're, if we're in that situation for people being referred and not being seen within the targets. As I say, I believe in these targets. They're very challenging for a reason, and we should never reduce the target. We should continue to keep the pressure on and make sure that the service responds to the need. So I think that's, that's the challenge uh, for me, I think, as a health minister. But I, I keep saying this over and over again, but I can't say it enough. If we don't change how we do things, we're not going to deliver better outcomes. So that's certainly what I'm committed to in the months and the years ahead. Call Mr Jerry Carroll. Um, the minister might have seen the recent uh, Nolan show where a member of the audience detailed uh, horrific weight um, of treatment for abscesses in the mouth for her child and this is obviously one of, uh, of many cases we've seen and further investigation shows that waiting times for West Belfast are significantly higher than uh, other areas for a range of uh, ailments. Uh, can the Minister detail her plans to try and address this postcode letter? Thank you. Before the Minister comes to answer the question, the question was an urgent oral question around breast cancer for the Minister whether or not she decides to answer the question. I know you're new to the House, um, so I would be kind in so far as to say that it comes back to the bigger picture about waiting lists. We have to deal with the waiting list issue, and the only way we're going to tackle that is if we transform health and social care. I have received, there's been many bodies I've worked on over the last number of years, things that have went well, things that haven't went so well, things that haven't been implemented the way they should be. I have now received a, a professional or a panel report which is looking at the boring platform which, which is health and social care. I intend over the next number of weeks to, to uh, set out my stall in terms of how I'm going to deliver better outcomes for every, every individual and that's what we should be about. So whether it's dental waiting lists, whether it's autism referrals for assessment, whether it's breast cancer referrals, it doesn't matter what it is because you see if it's happening to you, it's the most important thing in your life. So we need to get to the point where we have appropriate um, referrals in a timely manner and people are getting assessed and getting the help that they need. That's the transformation piece that I'm involved in myself in. That's the priority piece that I'm involved in myself in. Call Mr Jim Allister. It seems to me that the fact that these figures got so bad suggests that there was some deficiency in the departmental or other oversight. Well, surely the purpose of oversight is to identify and arrest the trends. Therefore, has anything new been done in terms of oversight in order to identify and arrest such trends in this trust or any, anywhere else? The problems that we're talking about today in relation to the Southern Trust are in relation to breast cancer referrals, but I have consistently said that waiting lists across the police, no matter what it is you're um, being referred for, aren't acceptable, they aren't tolerable, and they can't continue. And they have continued to grow year on year, but one of the main reasons that they continue to grow is the fact that we have an outdated system that's trying to deliver 21st century health and social care, and it's not happening. So we need to reform the system in order to allow us to get better outcomes. I want to get to the point where we can stand in this house and talk about real um, positive um, service developments that make a real difference to people as opposed to continually talking about the negativity around witness. And I, as I said, it is the most challenging thing for you as an individual if you're on a waiting list and you're in pain or you have a child who's ill or for whatever reason you may be on a waiting list. We we'll have to get the waiting list down and I look forward to working with every member in this house to make sure we get to that point. We need to invest in health and social care. We need to invest in people's outcomes. 
We need to tackle root causes of why people get sick in the first place. The correlation between deprivation and outcomes, whether it be cancer, whether it be tooth decay, or whether it be many other conditions, is so stark. We need to tackle early intervention, invest in early intervention, prevention, and we need cross-departmental working. I think the new style programme for government is going to allow us to do that a lot more fit for purpose and allow us to deliver a lot more better outcomes. Well, Mr. Trevor Clark. Mr. Speaker, and can I thank the Minister for her, uh, her responses so far here today? I'm sure the Minister, hopefully, will agree, given the day when there's a motion and debate about opening transparency, the very fact that you actually publish these figures shows that you, as a Minister, and others within the executive want to be open and transparent. But I'm sure you are equally concerned that the, the issue has been happening in that particular trust. But would you join with me in saying your disappointment where some want to sensationalise this today? We're suggesting heads will roll whenever you've just indicated in your statement that the survival rates in Northern Ireland are higher than anywhere else within the UK. Yeah, I think it's really, really important that we don't need jerk, that there's never that type of approach. As I said, I published these last Thursday and it's taken six days later before it comes to this House as an urgent oral. I, that for me begs a question about someone's genuine approach to dealing with the issue. There is genuine concern out there in relation to waiting lists and referrals, and I accept that. I actually met Cancer Focus yesterday, and this is one of the issues which we actually discussed. There is genuine concerns out there which we need to address. Nobody should wait any longer than the ministerial targets that have been set out. And if that continues to happen, then that's where we have to take real and meaningful action. And those trusts are working hard. The Southern Trust, I think, have turned the picture around. They have faced down the challenges which they've had. But is it acceptable whenever it happens? No, it's not. But we have to just keep driving forward change and making sure people work together and that they deliver better outcomes. Call Mr. Robbie Butler. Uh, I'd like to first of all thank uh, Mr. Mark Durkin for bringing this uh, urgent question and also thank the Minister for coming in uh, to address us and welcome the publishing of those uh, statistics last week, which don't make good reading for anybody. Um, Mr. I agree with Dr. O'Hagan this morning when she described the situation for urgent cancer treatment as horrendous. And in Mr. Durkin's question, uh, he did ask for what immediate interventions uh, that her, your department would be taking. Uh, my colleague uh, wrote to you on a specific issue being faced by the Southern Trust. And in your answer, you referred to long-term solutions. And again today, uh, you referred to your solutions. Um, and this was around sustainable breast clinics and services. What are your solutions, Minister, uh, especially for me on workforce planning? Uh, and I know you've, you've talked about the long-term plan. I ask Mr. I am, Butler to come to his question. Yes, certainly. Okay, so it's, it's, it's around the, the workforce planning uh, and the, the determination you've given to give us some solutions. Well, I'm always trying to find solutions. I'm always trying to deliver better outcomes for people. And the way I think we're going to do that is with transforming how we deliver health and social care. So regardless of what we're talking about, it's about delivering better outcomes. It's about early intervention. It's about prevention. Some of the challenges, and particularly in relation to the Southern Trust, has been around workforce challenges. And that's not, just, that's not specific to the Southern Trust. That's right across the board. There's difficulty in terms of recruitment of radiologists. There's difficulty in terms of consultants. So despite the fact that Southern Trust went out to recruitment, they, they weren't able to be successful in terms of recruiting anybody into those posts. They're out again to recruitment, and hopefully that will start to alleviate the, the situation within the trust itself. In the meantime, it's working with um, the other trusts to make sure that they are able to provide additional clinics and they're able to support people and have them assessed in, within the timescales, particularly in relation to the 14-day target. And as I said, the figures that, that are there now speak for themselves in terms of them being able to turn that picture around. Workforce planning in general, major issue. Workforce planning right across health and social care, major issue. Something that I certainly tackle, want to tackle in the time ahead. We, if we're going to transform health and social care, if we're going to have more investment in the community, then we have to make sure we've got a workforce that's fit for purpose, that a workforce that's supported and going out and doing the job that they do best in terms of engaging with people, treating with people and helping people. So I'm certainly committed to making sure that we have an overarching workforce plan. And I think that's going to be key in terms of alongside uh, service delivery, service reconfiguration, changing how we do things, Key to all of that and the success of all of that has also been able to make sure that the workforce are brought along with you and also that they're up for the challenges and the change that needs to happen. Call Mr. Chris Little. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I don't think the executive should be using this as an opportunity to cite openness and transparency, given that it has required an urgent oral question to allow the Assembly to scrutinise these startling statistics in relation uh, to breast cancer consultations. 
It's also my understanding as a result of a, a question provided to me today that in another trust there's a 31 week for urgent heart consultations. A frequent explanation given for these difficulties is difficulty in relation to the recruitment and retention of senior consultants. So can I ask the Minister what are the reasons for this difficulty and what is being done to immediately address them? Well, your first point in relation to the executive using the opportunity to talk about openness and transparency. It's taken others six days to bring an urgent order to the House. I published this. I published this information last Thursday. I published the information last Thursday, and I would much. I, I published the information six days ago. Well, let's let's be very clear then. Not one member of the opposition benches has written to me, asked me a question, emailed me, called to my office. Not one person. Not not after Thursday. Not after Thursday. Not after I published the results. Ms Dobson has in the past raised the issue of breast cancer referrals, I will certainly give her that, but not one member, Mark Durkin, member of the Health Committee who's brought the urgent order today, has not asked me to talk about this issue. I publish the information because I believe it's better to be out there in the public domain. Can I ask, so the, don't ask the Minister to address her remarks to the Chair? <laughs> so, can Corlea, can Corlea, I brought the information into the public domain because I think that's where it should be. I'm committed to making sure that we deliver better outcomes for all those women who find themselves referred for breast cancer assessment. I will find, not be found wanting in terms of my priority in dealing with waiting lists and bringing them down, and I will not be found wanting in terms of transforming health and social care. And I hope the opposition are as, are, want to bring as many urgent orders as absolutely possible to talk about every issue, because I am going to be committed to driving form transformation, and I hope they assist me with that. Call Mr. Roy Beggs. The Minister keeps talking about the importance of transforming, transforming health care and making changes, and she keeps coming off with this. And the previous member had talked about the issue of transparency. When will the members see the Bengoa report, which she has had in her possession for several months? In a couple of weeks. <laughs> Call Mr. Robin Swan. Um, can I just inform the Minister she's talking a lot about open and transparency. The opposition has tabled a debate, two and a half hours, on health issues for the 18th, so she can be an open and transparent then, and she possibly can. It will be beneficial. Brilliant. Members, that concludes this item of business.